Hello, everyone. My name is Verena. I am one of the owners and operators of Solid Earth and also the driving force behind Earth Building School, an online earth building platform. And I have set myself the intention to be going live regularly once a week, at least to start off with this year. I have set um, a schedule. So this week I'm going to talk about choosing natural building techniques uh, based on your local conditions. It's something that we get asked a lot and I think um, there's many ways of looking at this. So just to frame the whole thing, um, we are based in New Zealand. We have got 20 years of professional experience in our building business, and I personally have got 30 years of earth building experience. So I'm definitely coming at this uh, from the earth building lens with that hat, hat on, but I have made an effort of extending this live to include other natural building, uh, building techniques such as straw bale, hempcrete, and rammed earth, which is earth building, but which we are not um, involved in doing. And just drawing from personal experience and also interest, um, professional uh, research that I have been doing. And also I was part of the revision committee for the New Zealand Earth Building Standards, which has been revised in 2020. And it has been greatly um, extended. So the New Zealand Earth Building Standards actually cover some other natural building techniques. So just to frame, that um, not just coming at it from an Adobe perspective or even just an earth building perspective, but definitely the caveat that there's that lens on. And yeah, I, I wanted to just open this discussion because there's many ways of looking at this. Um, how do we choose natural building techniques? And I'm sometimes encountering um, some kind of opinionated uh, statements and also statements that might not quite be accurate. So just wanting to see this um, humbly, yeah, and acknowledging that I have to have got my lens and at the same time really wanting to contribute towards demystifying some of the things and hopefully um, creating a little bit more clarity around this um, topic. So I have prepared a presentation because A, it helps me to um, stay on track and also it gives you hopefully a little bit of a, a visual anchor and more clarity and you're totally welcome to put uh, questions into the chat. I'll probably get to them at the end of the live stream and same thing if you're watching the replay um, I would be very happy to answer questions in the comments. So just wanting to um, start like this is not quite right ready at the right moment i was preparing this earlier let's start at the start um yeah so just to frame this conversation you know which technique are we choosing and why and i think it is fair to say that um a lot of that initial um leaning towards one thing or another is rooted into in the look. So we look at certain things, we look at them on Pinterest or online, and we love uh, the look of certain things. And as an extension of that, we might also um, maybe be drawn towards the look, like not just how it looks, but, you know, how cool it is or how something resonates with us. And there's definitely um, validity in this. I have my preferences too. But I feel there is much more depth that can be plumbed when deciding on a, the different techniques that are available. And we should really dig deeper than just the surface look. Um, by look, I'm sort of assuming that you know the different earth building techniques. And if not, you can definitely um, have a look at our page or ask and i'm happy to share photos i'm not comfortable sharing photos of other people's work um, as part of a life so that's why i have not put in uh, photos at this point to clarify the techniques but we're looking at things like renders the, the brick surfaces the mud bricks the press bricks 
more hand sculpted surfaces that you know it would be your cob or what on dope type uh, construction and then the really deep bowls the deep reveals that straw bell offers and then also extending that into all the natural plaster surfaces which can come in a very wide range of looks uh, can be very contemporary can be more organic can be you know sort of more undulating more textured um, really the sky's the limit with with plasters there's so much um variety and option when it comes to plaster surfaces so really wanting to say with this you know um i understand that the look is a really important part of this and what draws us and it is also important for our emotional well-being and so forth but it doesn't have to follow a certain look just because it's natural building in actual fact many natural buildings historic buildings you wouldn't even know that uh, you're looking at an earth building for example because on the outside they look quite normal like just plastered flat and you wouldn't even know that there's a, a mud brick um, wall underneath and as um, the natural building movement is growing and there's more interest in this like new techniques or new variations of techniques are emerging which is exciting so there is the emergence of hempcrete for example and the emergence of uh, straw sip walls like prefabricated straw bell walls which is all really exciting and definitely has its, uh, has its place and I want to deconstruct this a little bit because um, I'm sort of finding that at the moment what I'm observing is that uh, especially things like hempcrete and rammed earth are quite cool uh, they're um, done more widely and things like rammed earth uh, like uh, Dolby block is getting a little bit less cool and is unfortunately not um, very popular at the moment and I'm wondering why like why is this and I'm going to um, have a little bit of a focus on Adobe because I think it is very very underrated so what else if not just the look could we be looking at and I'm, I'm going at this in in quite a sort of a <sighs> I'm drilling down into different questions so you could be wondering, you know, like, am I retrofitting or building new? And depending on the, it's quite two quite different things. It's actually the retrofitting is very exciting in my, my experience. And it is something that we, for example, cover very extensively in our uh, natural building, online natural building program. So half of the program is only about retrofitting because there's such a huge scope of you know starting with an existing building and incorporating natural materials into your build so if you're just retrofitting um, you're in an interior situation often and there's no restrictions really what you're doing with this as long as it is safe so earth building really um, lends itself beautifully I, I believe to retrofitting because you are dealing with smaller quantities of materials you're out of the weather um, you often can dig the materials from site or develop uh, the materials with um, very local materials and you're not bound by regulations again you know with the caveat that it is done safely so if you are introducing a lot of weight you need to make sure that that's supported and safe especially in places like Aotearoa New Zealand where we have earthquakes but really the retrofitting earth building really lends itself to that you can do your daubed earth panels uh, you can do veneers rammed earth adobe veneers you can do light infills that could be with earth light earth or with your um, hemp crate you can apply natural plasters over a variety of substrates and possibly also build self-supporting self walls as long as they are stable and have good foundations on the other hand if you're looking at a new build it, it gets a little bit more specific because you're um, thinking about a structure and when you want to build new you have certain options again you can do load bearing earth walls be that adobe cob rammed earth so and so forth you could opt for a straw bell building 
you could uh, opt for an, uh, an earth timber hybrid. That means a timber construction with an infill that mainly serves insulation purposes. So that's where you would be doing light earth infill, your hempcrete and so forth. And you see, there's lots to choose from, really. Um, and what you would choose, um, again, depends on, on your local conditions. And that's what we're going to look at in, in this. Um, I think it's going to be about 50 minutes or so, maybe a little bit less. So before I launch into it from my own professional experience, I just wanted to mention this amazing free resource by the Endeavour Centre. So it's a sustainable building school in Canada. And on their website, there is a materials encyclopedia. It's free. You can go in and it you can it goes, you know, like wall systems, insulation, all the different parts of a building. And then you click on it and there's drop down menus that shows you a very wide range of construction materials and methods. And I'm just going to put this in. I know it's kind of small on here. Just pay attention to these lines here because that's the rating that uh, the building method is receiving. And I'm going to flick through without going too much in depth into their analysis of the different construction methods, but just to show you a little bit of a comparison and what we could be looking at. So they have looked at things like environmental impacts, embodied energy, waste, the energy efficiency, which is the insulation value, the way they um, define it, material costs, labor input skills, required sourcing materials and then building code compliance things um, and indoor air quality. So it's it's very in-depth. I have to say it is uh, focused on Canada. So every country would be slightly different in this analysis, but it is very useful, um, a very useful starting point, I, I believe, for a, a you know a more in-depth analysis of the different um, techniques. So again, just look at the different um, ratings here, and I'll just speak to the things that sort of stand out to me. So this is a, a wood frame construction. Um, what I'm looking at here is, you know, it, it, it is. Uh, it is a common way of building. Uh, it's a biomaterial, so it has good credentials. Uh, it depends a little bit how uh, the wood is logged and, and so forth. Um, what I'm missing in this analysis is, you know, the, the effort that goes into logging and producing logs. So it's really just what we're looking at here in terms of, you know, how easy it is to build is just like the lumber is on site and we're building with timber. And obviously, it is very easy to build in terms of compliance. And here they are saying sourcing and availability is the best. And that's because in that country, there is timber availability at this point, similar to Aotearoa New Zealand. Um, we have a big um, timber industry. But what we're actually encountering at the moment is that there is timber shortages. So really actually wanting to point that out that um we are in a moment where there might be material shortages and that that needs to be kept in mind moving forward comparing that to for example straw bale walls um there's you see here it's got good credentials all around like it has a lot of variation depending on different factors locally and what I'm looking at here, for example, um, is the energy efficiency. It's very good on energy on insulation value. And I'm also looking at labor inputs. So because I'm starting to move into natural materials now and comparing uh, things like straw bale and earth building, for example. So, you know, this is it, it sort of writes from really good to sort of average. If you compare that to your Adobe, you're actually looking at something similar, but the environmental impacts up here um, are really good for earth building materials. So 
low environmental impact because it's basically just base material dug, um, low in board bodied energy for the same reason. You're often using very local materials. Uh, it's often zero waste actually. But what stands out to me here is the energy efficiency, which is rated as bad, so bad insulation values. And then the labor input here, which they write as high. And I'm going to leave this here for a moment, park it up and just deconstruct that a little bit, uh, a little bit further into the presentation. So apart from the insulation value and the labor input, Earth has very good credentials. And again, there's a range here because local conditions um, vary. But comparing this to lumber, for example, um, this analysis contains everything from the point when you dig the soil. So it's not really comparing apples to apples because with the lumber, you're just getting the numbers for um, building with timber on site. We're here. The numbers include everything from producing your earth building materials to construction and finishing. Comparing that to straw clay. So straw clay is a lightweight um, clay insulation. It requires a timber frame, gets infilled. And I'm putting that in so that we now can compare it to something like uh, hempcrete. Again, you see here, very good um, environmental credentials. The energy efficiency depends on the heaviness, the density of the material. So you can have quite good insulation values to not so good insulation materials. Again, they say there is a lot of labor input and there is an issue with building compliance. Comparing that to your hempcrete insulation, I was actually surprised about this um, because hempcrete is getting very popular and it is often uh, sold as being very environmentally friendly. And I have got my reservations about hempcrete <laughs> Even though I've got a lot of lot of love for the material, ever since um, the '90s, I, I was, you know, one of those really young people that was uh, campaigning on hemp becoming legal so that we could um, have a hemp industry. But I am dubious about um, the lime content, the high use of lime in construction in this day and age of climate change because of the implied. Um, embodied energy and you see it's not terrible but it's still it's definitely higher than earth and also having used lime extensively for lime plasters in my work um, I I love lime <laughs> but it is not very friendly to work with and if I had the choice I would always work you know if I'm working with bulk materials I would always use earth so yeah putting this in here it is up and coming but you see the material cost can be quite high. They also say high labor imports. It's probably e comparable to infilling and light earth infill. And um, there's still an, an availability and sourcing issue. So in some countries it's coming and in other countries it's still not an option. Moving more into my own professional experience and how I would look at the, the question, you know, which which technique should we choose? And I'm actually discussing this quite a lot with clients because even though my um, we have a, an, an Adobe yard and we sell mud bricks, we will not push mud bricks onto clients. We will support them where they're at and we will support them to do what they want to do. And in my book, you know what, as long as it's natural building, it's all good. Like it's great. It's it's a, a step into the right direction. But often clients come with a preconceived idea of what they want to be doing. And it might not be the, the best thing for them, for their situation. So I'm asking questions like, is this just, again, is it like a retrofitting? Is it just for a partition wall or like an interior wall? Or, or is this for an entire building structure? And depending on the answer to that question, certain techniques will make more sense than others. And you see the ones that would make sense for a whole building structure, again, would be your load-bearing earth walls. Um, 
Light Adobe, which I will be talking about in depth in a moment, which is load bearing. It's a full earth wall with better insulation values. And then you would have your timber frame structures, again, your hybrid construction with earthen elements or earthen infills or hempcrete infill and so forth. Piggybacking on that question, you know, is it a partition wall or is it the whole building envelope? Is it like the structure? You could also ask, am I primarily putting this in as thermal mass, heavy wall that can store heat? Or am I primarily putting this in as insulation? Do I need insulation? So if you have your exterior, exterior walls, you will need insulation, especially in temperate climates and in cold climates. So the heavy materials don't have good insulation material uh, insulation values. Like if you use heavy materials such as rammed earth or cob or adobe, traditional adobe, you will need to have extra thick walls or you would have to have additional exterior insulation in temperate and cold climates. In hot climates, it's not an issue. It's actually perfect because your thermal mass will regulate temperature fluctuations. In places where you need insulation in your exterior walls, it makes more sense to have lighter weight walls. So you would have in very cold climates, your, a straw bale building, maybe a hempcrete building, or you would go in temperate climates, you would go to your light earth infills or light adobe. Again, light adobe is a load bearing mud brick system with better insulation values. And depending on how you do all of this, how you put things together, you will still need your earthen plasters or your lime plasters to finish walls off. And these earthen plasters will add, that's why I've put them in the middle, they will add a little bit of thermal mass to your inside of your building. So for, for example, if you go for a straw bale building, you will have an earthen plaster or a lime plaster to finish the wall off. You could look at your available materials. So in some places, um, it is very easy to get um, hold of fibers. And in actual fact, um, often in cooler climates, grain is grown. So it makes a lot of sense to go to your straw bale construction because you have straw bales available. Straw is an agricultural waste product, and it is awesome to use this biomaterial in construction and it has been done for a long time very successfully. Hemp again you know up and coming and can be grown in many places but it is not grown in, in many places yet and at the moment hemp crit is used primarily hemp like hemp shiv herds are primarily mixed with lime as a binder for your hemp crit. I would be very excited to see this move into hemp earth more in the future. Then in other places, especially actually in places where um, there is um, a timber industry and they're like wood is processed, your light adobe makes a lot of sense. This is what we have here. That's our local situation. Nelson is um, a port that exports logs. There is a lot of um, wood shavings and uh, sawdust and wood waste products available. And we use these products, these fibers in our light adobe blocks. You can also use other fibers mixed with earth for light earth infill. So that could be straw, it could be pumice, it could be hemp, it could be wood shavings. In places where you have little access to fibers, not you know, where no grains are grown, where fibers have to be imported, it's often in hotter countries. So in those countries, techniques like the Adobe brick technique and rammed earth make so much sense. In actual fact, I'm working with someone in Jordan at the moment, and they just have found out that the straw that they can build uh, purchase is actually imported. So really, it pays to do a little bit of homework and see where things come from. And the fibers you know, are exciting. There's many different kinds of fibers that you can ex explore. And in actual fact, like last week, I did the um, 
the live on developing mixes. So if you're interested in that, I, I would suggest have a look at that because we talked about the ways of um, exploring mixes and, and experimenting with different fibers um, in depth. Another question that comes, especially for um, owner builders, and that's tying back to um, what I was showing, uh, the Encyclopedia of Materials by the Endeavor Center. Um, labor was one of the things that they sort of didn't write great uh, for earth building. So it's often, um, and there's a point to that, but often the concept, uh, the, the, the idea is that earth building is terribly labor intensive. And this can be true, but it doesn't have to be true. And in actual fact, like we really want to educate people that it makes a lot of sense to um, mechanize certain certain processes, especially the mixing process, and that that doesn't need to be highly technical. So just because you're um, finding ways of producing large amounts of mix, let's say using a tractor with a tiller or something like that, a bobcat or something, you can um, hire those those machine this kind of machinery or you can talk to someone locally maybe that has them and you can produce a, a large amount of mix ahead of time and with earth building it's really great because uh, the mix doesn't go off it doesn't set it's not a chemical set like with lime and you can just produce a mix in one go and then build so really wanting to put that out there that to work to like explore what is available in terms of mixing support as a part of the bigger picture. Because once the mixing is sorted, the actual brick making and the brick laying is not actually that um, labor intense. And I, I can say this from experience, um, having made many bricks in my life and also having built a house that is half mud brick. So the bottom is mud brick building and then the upstairs is a timber frame building so I, I can really compare the two things so don't let the perception that earth building is really labor intense hold you back from really um, exploring this um, it's also the question you know, like how skilled do you have to be uh, to do certain techniques and for example, in, in regards to carpentry, you definitely need a, a good set of skills. You need tools and so forth. You need to have experience using those tools. Um, on the other hand, making a mud brick and laying mud bricks can be pretty straightforward. And this is what we're teaching in, in the online course is actually taking people from sourcing the soil, testing the soil, making bricks, designing the building, laying bricks, finishing the bricks. The whole thing can be conveyed remotely over like an online course. And as long as you know that what we're offering is the experience to avoid certain mistakes and also suggestions on how to streamline the process. But the actual process is not complicated and it is very useful for owner builders it's very forgiving and it's what makes me really excited about this because there is just such a an empowerment in being able to build your own building and it is absolutely possible same thing with carpentry but you just need to have a little bit more skills and more tools and i've put rammed earth over here because rammed earth has a little bit of like higher requirements in terms of building um, the shutters. So there is carpentry involved in the shutter building and the actual ramming process is quite labor intense. So rammed earth is, is the most, requires the most skill of all the earth building techniques. And then I've put these other things in the middle here, sort of halfway, your earthen and lime plasters. Plastering is, is a, a trade, so like you need to practice a little bit. It's actually possible to pick it up quite easily. If you're into learning plastering, I would suggest start with earthen plasters because they're more forgiving. They don't have the set times, and then you can move into lime plasters. 
and your infill techniques, be this light earth or um, your hemp crate, again, needs a little bit more in terms of your shelter building. So, yeah, it's just something that you can analyze and then make your decisions. It also depends a little bit on, on the size of your team, you know, what is possible, how long things take. And again, same thing here, the tools and gear that is required. Um, Adobe, for example, is a very sort of hands-on, simple technique. Um, Render is more involved. And then there's the, this, this middle ground. And the mixing is probably the area that really requires um, thought in terms of getting gear. And where, in my opinion, it makes a lot of sense to get a hold of, you know, hire a mixer or uh, get hold of that by a mixer because that really will save you a lot of um, work. And if you're having to do car carpentry, obviously there is also tools involved in that. The last thing that also really in influences or should influence um, the decision is your drying time. So it makes a lot of sense to time your natural building project properly um, to build into the in the warm month especially if you're using techniques that um, have incorporated water but also just you know to be in good weather and so forth depends a little bit if you're working undercover if you already have a, a, a roof that is erected or if you're building from the ground up and are out in the elements and these times that I've listed here, they're approximations, but I wanted to really share um, the times that it takes us to build in the different techniques, fully acknowledging that um, that may be different for you. It depends on, on your skill. It depends, you know, if you're doing this next to work and if you have help and so forth. But we, I actually really believe these timeframes are realistic. And what you see here is that that higher um, time requirements come with um, wetter techniques. So it's not just more labor intense. The, if you're using a wet technique, you will have to give it enough time to dry out. So that's why the times go up with those techniques. Other resource considerations again, circling back to the Encyclopedia of Building Materials by the Endeavour Centre, there's lots of uh, uh, considerations that you could look at. One big one for everyone is always the cost. And I have just have to say, it's, it's one of the questions, you know, like how long is a piece of string? I, I get asked a lot, how much will it cost to build a two bedroom house? And I'm not able to answer that question because the wall system actually doesn't make the lion's share of the overall building cost. And your owner builder effort definitely can reduce cost if you use local materials that you get for cheap or for free. It will definitely affect the overall cost, especially now as building uh, materials are really rising in price due to shortage shortages. And we're already finding this in our own work. We are getting approached by people that would have never considered natural building or earth building just uh, because of cost, because they want to compare all of a sudden, you know, like the fixings, the steel, the timber, the claddings, everything is rising up to 30% a year. So definitely worth um, checking out what would be available for you to use cheaply. And on that note, also really um, encouraging reuse of building materials and to design simple and modest. The environmental footprint is something that is really close to my heart. And I think in this day and age, it's, it's construction is a really big part of, uh, uh, of global um, carbon emissions. And we definitely need to start looking at things like embodied energy not just energy in use. And it, it, I can turn it the way I want it, like earth building on that front just really um, has good credentials 
And even if the insulation values are a little bit not so good, um, it will be offset uh, by very low embodied energy. So I know this is a little bit controversial and I want to do a whole Facebook Live only on this topic because there is nuance to it and there is a lot of um, misunderstandings around energy efficiency in building and yeah it is <laughs> something I'm feeling quite passionate and fired up about but I'm not I'm not going to go into this too much in this framework now it will come in a couple of weeks so really encouraging you to look at the environmental impact of different building materials you know just because uh, something is timber how has it been logged how has it been treated um, what's the embodied energy how far away does it come from does it off gas and so forth so there's lo lots to think about and to finish off i wanted to just give you the um the case study of adobe construction to show you what i mean um a with Adobe construction with light Adobe and also to open up this conversation about, you know, why is this construction method not more um, widely used, more popular and also more, um, you know, why aren't there more businesses going into Adobe? Which I'm really, you know, I'm really wondering, I'm really uh, sitting with these questions as time goes on. I, I have been in business 20 years and I still love this um, construction method with all my heart and I find it makes more and more sense especially uh, as we have gone into the development of light adobe so with adobe we mean a puddled mud brick it is basically just subsoil and a little bit of straw and then depending on what you want to achieve with, with the mud brick, if you want it to be heavier or lighter, you can add straw, cellulose, or light aggregates, such as uh, wood shavings, to the brick to lighten it. And then it is sun-dried, and it is laid in an earthen mortar. So the whole wall is earthen, and there's no addition of cement. Um, it's just uh, clay and biomaterials. In New Zealand, um, we are incorporating steel rods every approximately one and a half meters for earthquake safety reasons. In other countries, that is not required. So I have been talking about the New Zealand earth building standards and I'll put a link to the standard that covers earth building construction again like in, in the comments. But just wanting to say that this construction method has been around for thousands of years. It has stood the test of time and it has also been adapted to modern requirements, especially in Aotearoa, New Zealand, where we have these earth building standards since 1998. But we've also had a, a series of quite serious um, earthquakes and we have been able to study how these buildings have performed in a seismic event and the ones that were designed to standard have done really well so there's a lot of um, up-to-date knowledge and research and development that is going into this construction in this country and one of them is the development of these lighter weight adobe blocks which are still load bearing but have much better insulation values to respond to the increased need for insulation for energy efficiency purposes here you also see that the mud brick can be used as an internal veneer as a thermal mass material so you can play with this material by adjusting its density to make it heavy to store heat or to make it light to insulate listing all the different aspects of adobe construction um I will talk to a few of these. Adobe construction is multifunction. And what I mean by that is that an Adobe wall, a load bearing Adobe wall um, is everything. So it is a monolithic wall made out of Adobe bricks. It is your structure, 
it is your insulation layer, it is your internal lining, it is your cladding. So in this, in its simplest form, you can just build an Adobe wall and that's it. You don't need um, all these different layers in your wall that fulfill different functions, multifunction. You can make mud bricks from a very wide range of soils. It's easy to do, it's easy to learn, and it's easy to develop. Um, you can develop load-bearing blocks yourself following the New Zealand earth building standards, which also apply to other countries. Again, I'll put a, a link to those into the comments. It's very sim simple. In its simplest form, you're mixing mud and you're putting it into a hand mold and just casting bricks and then putting bricks together with um, earthen mor uh, mortar. So there's minimal gear requirements. If you want to speed things up or go to a bigger operation, you can use, for example, the tiller on the back of a tractor, a rotary hoe for your mixing. And the setup, for example, in our Adobe yard is very simple. You know, it's not fancy. It's not a, a factory. It is still a manufacturer, but we we have mechanized the um, the mixing process and we cast multiple, like up to thirty bricks at a time. So, if you're interested in that, there's a, a video on our Facebook page about um, how we mix, and I'll, I'll be talking about this a little bit more. Once the bricks are dry and go to site, construction is really fast. So it's fast to lay bricks. And as I said, the, the wall is everything in one go. So you're laying the wall and you're letting it dry. It dries out fast because your units are already dry when you put them into the wall. And then you just finish them with simple earthen finishes, maybe a lime wash or a lime plaster if you want to tidy things up on the outside but it's very simple what it requires is good foundations because even with your light adobe you're still looking at a substantial amount of weight so like you have to keep that in mind and the bricks have to be made and stored ahead of time so there's um you know, there's a distinct time when you're making bricks and then when you're laying bricks. And if we circle back to that comparison to timber frame building, I just see that the brick production is comparable to logging and cutting logs. And then the block laying is comparable to putting up a house. So there's these two different times or two different um, steps in construction anyway, with the difference that Usually you are not logging and making logs. Maybe you are, and that's awesome. But with the mud break, you can definitely make your own building materials and that really brings costs down. Um, the walls are quite thick. So they range between 300 millimeters wide to 450 millimeters wide, depending on the insulation values you're after. So with those really big chunky walls, you're going into an aesthetic that looks a little bit similar to your straw bell walls. And this is where I want to say, you know, if you're in a very cold climate, in a climate where there is a grain growing, where it is easy for you to build a straw bell building, do. Like, it doesn't make sense to make mud bricks in a cold climate. But if you're in a temperate climate and you have availability of, of soils and there is um, maybe wood waste around, consider making light adobe blocks because they're very easy to to use and in my experience comparing the two um, methods people say oh it's so easy to build with straw bales you just raise the bales in a day or in a weekend and then you just have to plaster and it's true you you can raise the bales really quickly there's quite a lot of work involved in plastering you know straightening out the walls and we have done this. Um, we usually don't raise the bales because that usually gets done by the owners or you know a working bee or something. But we have been professionally uh, plastering straw bale buildings, and it is it, there's a little bit of effort involved. And we do mechanize the, the process. We have a, a plaster pump, so that plastering step should not be underestimated. And in actual fact, if I compare um, raising bales and finishing an adobe wall and 
it's about comparable you know there, there is it's just different but there is definitely quite a lot of labor involved in straw bale buildings as well and you can also streamline that process by making your mixes um, mechanized the adobe construction method is fully covered in the New Zealand Earth Building Standards. And I'm, I'm just going to share the link now. So I will also be putting this into, into the comments. But the New Zealand Earth Building Standards is comprised of three publications. There is um, Earth Buildings Not Requiring Specific Design, which covers the design um, process. There's Materials and Construction for Earth Buildings, which covers um, testing and how things are put together. And then there is a specific engineering um, engineering standard that is for engineers. So very, very in-depth and at the same time, uh, very user-friendly and geared towards um, owner builders. And in actual fact, this is also something that we are talking about um, in depth in the online program that I'm running. Because even if you're not based in Aotearoa, New Zealand, it is useful to look at the earth building standards and it will take you through step by step uh, through design, through the development of materials, testing of materials, and it is very, um, very user friendly. So we teach this um, online. And the beauty of that is that people will come at it with their local conditions, with their local soils, with their local other materials, their fibers and so forth. And we can take them through from start to finish from the development of their earth building materials or their infills or their whatever they want to do, plasters, development of mixes, testing of mixes, and then the skills. And it is absolutely feasible, it's fun, and it can be conveyed over distance. And yeah, it just makes me really happy <laughs> to do this and also really sharing the love for natural building and encouraging people to be open minded about which technique to use. There's lots to choose from. And these are some of the questions you could be asking yourself, you know, when you make the decisions of what to go for. So just a little bit more in terms of um, talking about timelines to give you an idea is again the the uh, example is adobe here you would go through a timeline you know start to finish and that will influence how long a building project will take and it is also really useful to think about this ahead of time so that you can make sure that you will time things properly with the seasons. So every technique has a, a different timeline here. And I'm just showing this as an example, Adobe. The cob is a little bit different because you're putting in a, a wet material. So you have a, a bigger amount of drying time over here. Hemp, um, hempcrete will be different again and so forth. So, yeah, lots to think about. And I hope it's it's exciting to think about, like it definitely is for me. And if you have questions about this and, you know, like you want more nuance, by all means, get in touch. Um, I'm not claiming that all of this is, you know, the same in every country, in every place. I would encourage you to look at the Encyclopedia of, of Materials by the Endeavour Centre and also say you know it is uh looking at it from canadian uh and there is variation in some of those analyses for sure and here just finishing up with a couple of images of uh, adobe buildings that we have been involved in um the, the building on the left you see was totally owner built um they used bricks that we supplied but built the whole building by themselves um they were not carpenters and they did such an amazing job and they built this in just over a year and the other building a uh, picture on the right is the interior just to show you um 
an aesthetic of a possible wall finish. It doesn't have to look like that. It can be flat. It can be more rustic. It can be pointed or plastered flat. But it's just something that shows the beauty of earth building. And that is a light adobe building that we were involved in a couple of years ago. Also, coincidentally, built by an old women's team. So I hope you enjoyed this. And yeah, I will see you again next week for the next live. Thank you so much. Just going over to some of the um, comments. Yes, Matthew, thank you. Um, it is late in France and I'm so happy you're tuning in. Happy New Year. <laughs> and yeah, I hope you get to watch it later on. You have um, the extended version of this being a student of the EBA. So I hope you enjoy. And then there was a question about what a puddled mud brick means. And I puddled mud brick, I will actually um, post a video that will speak more than a thousand words. But puddle is made, the, the mix is a little bit like uh, porridge and you're putting it into molds. So you're casting the mix kind of wet, but stiff enough that it holds its shape. So, April, I will um, link a video to um, the production method we use for our mud breaks, and then it will become clear. And then the other question was, what is the coldest weather range you would recommend the light adobe blocks for? And thank you for that question. So here we're looking at um, where we are, temperate. So we definitely go down to minus degree in winter but it is not freezing the whole for the whole day so we'll drop below zero at night and then during the day it will come up to seven eight degrees in winter and we have had the light adobe thermally modeled um, for christchurch which is slightly colder than that so you know if you have like snow cover um for uh, many months i i would go into you know, I would lean towards building a straw bale building or additionally insulating your earth building, which is always an option as well. And actually, just to, to mention the building that you see on screen right now, um, that is um, Canterbury. So that we're talking quite cold climate and you might even see there's a little bit of snow in the background. So temperate, not, not as cold as um, maybe Canada. So in Canada, um, Again, where the encyclopedia of building materials was developed, um, things like straw bale makes a lot of sense. So I hope that sort of feels balanced as a, an answer. And again, I will go into energy efficiency, consideration, R values, and all that discussion in a future um, live because it is a little bit of a complicated topic and I want to be able to really explain it. There's also, if you compare R values, for example, there's the imperial R value and then there's the metric R value and that gets a little bit confusing. So I need to really have time to explain that a little bit more. Thank you. I am, I am happy you found value in it. And I hope to see you again next week. All the best.